Conference Alabama, the site of the final 2003 regular season event on the FLW Tour. It's a big one. The $1 million Forestwood Open. Big money is on the line. Angler of the Year is on the line, as is entry in the lucrative FLW Tour Championship. It will all take place right here. Your preview starts right now on FLW Outdoors. Welcome to FLW Outdoors. I'm Carlton Wing with Hank Parker and Taylor Carr. We're joining you from Florence, Alabama, the site of the final event of the 2003 season on the Walmart FLW Tour. And guys, we've got an Angler of the Year race that is hot. And to see how hot, just go back to last year, Hank. Uh, Kevin Van Dam had a 28-point lead on Jay Yellis. But in the final event at Lake Champlain, Yellis made it up and won Angler of the Year. Dan Moorhead faces a similar situation this year. You know, I fished with Dan at uh, Kentucky Lake. He was on fish good, and he had about a 55 or so point lead there and over David Dudley. And I thought, boy, it's, he's on cruise control. He's got this thing won. Well, guess what? Dudley cut the points in half. So that does show how tight it is, and it can change. And I'll tell you, I'd hate to be uh, Dan in some respect, because the pressure is on. And Clark Winland is not too far behind as well. He trails Dan Moorhead by just 55 points. And on Lake Wheeler, where Clark does well, he could make up that ground as well. Could be a very interesting weekend here. Also interesting for the guys that are on the bubble. We've got guys that the top 48 make the season-ending championship. Guido Hidden is number 49. We've also got George Cochran, Steve Kennedy, the winner from Kentucky Lake, and Scott Martin. All big names just within a few slots of making that top 48. Well, and you know, uh, everybody kind of judges their season based on whether they make the championship. If you make the championship, you've had a great year. And the opportunity to fish for $500,000 is a great motivator. But still their whole season based on whether they make it or not and so the pressure is really on the guys that are on the bubble and Hank this fishery which is the Tennessee River system presents lots of challenges and lots of opportunities for these anglers well you know while we were at Kentucky Lake just a month or so ago they were flooding down here they had about eight inches of rain in 12 hours and this water was up we couldn't be standing where we are <laughs> But now they've pulled it back down, but they've got a lot of current. The fishermen like the current in this hot weather. The more current that's going to keep the fish up shallow, they're fishing grass pattern. So they're going to get the current they want, so they ought to be able to catch the fish. The conditions are good for a change. And, of course, guys, the conditions are very different than the last time the FLW Tour was here. That was in February when Larry Nixon won that event, and it was very cold back then. <laughs> well, you know, you look at a review of all the FLW tournaments we've had so far this year, it's been cold conditions, fronts, flooding. <laughs> this is the first time, yeah. if I were fishing this tournament, the water's doing what I would like for it to do. I don't know for all the other fishermen, but from my perspective, the water's doing just what I'd like for it to do. And the fishery is Lake Wheeler. The tournament is the 2003 Forest Wood Open. Here's a check of Alabama's Lake Wheeler. When Larry Nixon won on Lake Wheeler last year, it was a whole different fishery from what the FLW faces this week. Holy cow, look the fire of that stuff. That was February, with the water temperature around 50 degrees oh, and yeah. lake levels dropping and then rising. It's a lot of changes, really. Basically, the only thing that's stayed the same has been the name of the lake. Uh, the water level is a lot higher, it's a lot warmer, and there really seems to be a lot more fish biting this time. The water's up, it's fresh water. It's a different time of year, it's a lot warmer. The fish are starting, you know, it's post spawn, they're getting to their early summer routines, and they're moving right now. Wheeler's a good fishery any time of year, but fishing it in the late spring has anglers really excited. It'd be real good because it's a river, and that's when they're good, June, July, and I look to see a lot of fish caught. I remember I fished a tournament there in June a couple of years ago, and it's nothing to catch 14, 15-pound stringers, and I look to see some big weights caught. And this is really going to be the, a, a great tournament to have for the end of the season because it's actually going to bring out the best of the best. There's not going to, there's going to be so many variables at that lake. Lots of pros are practicing in and around the Decatur Flats area, and that's miles and miles of space, with fish in the shallow water in and around grass beds. Crankbaits are working, as are jigs and topwaters. There's even a Carolina rig bike going on. Uh, I think for the most part, a lot of people are going to be trying to find that grass uh, and concentrate on that because they feel, they'll feel that that's where the larger fish are going to be caught. 
but we've got the best of the best on the FLW Tour, so I think we're going to have guys trying to fit catch them deep as well as catch them shallow as well. It ought to be great. <laughs> Lake Wheeler is an impoundment of the Tennessee River and runs from Guttersville Dam where it starts out like a typical river. As it passes Decatur, it widens and flattens and flows on to Wheeler Dam. A veteran pro tells us Wheeler is as good as any bass fishery in the country if you figure out how to fish it. That's a challenge FLW competitors will gladly take on this week. Outdoor conditions start with a heavy chance of thunderstorms in the first part of the tournament, but working to partly cloudy skies by the end. Temperatures have highs in the 80s and lows through the 60s throughout. The UV index starts with a 2 on Wednesday and a 6 on Saturday. All right, let's look at Lake Wheeler and the challenges it brings the anglers you're going to talk to, Hank. First of all, Chris Elliott, just on the outside, barely, and looking in for that Jacobs. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like the conditions. I said I like the water. I like the water temperature. I like the current. But I wouldn't want these conditions if I were in that situation. I would like to have something uh, colder water, spinnerbait bite, crankbait bite, something that I could just kind of put it on cruise control and get in a rhythm, opposed to have to slow down and finesse fish. And I think this is going to be a slow down and finesse fish. So it's going to be a lot about nerves. Can you handle the pressure for Chris? You'll also talk to David Dudley and Clark Wendland, the anglers who are two and three behind Dan Moorhead trying to catch him for Landle Lakes Angler of the Year. And it could play into their hands because that's going to be another situation where it's going to be about nerves. And the hot water and the conditions are going to make Dan Moorhead slow down, and that may play into Clark and, and David Dudley's hands because they're going to be able to shoot for it while Moorhead's going to have to protect it, so his nerves are going to have to hold up to finesse fish. As a bonus, Hank will also talk with Everstar pro Karen Savick, who fishes co-angler on the FLW side. You know, that's going to be pretty interesting. We've never talked with a co-angler before, and they have to have a completely different mindset, you know, to fish out of the back of the boat and behind the pro, and, and they're kind of setting the pace, so you have to kind of roll with the blow, so that'll be interesting. A little bit later on in the program, we're going to take a look back at one of your buddies' big moments. Larry Nixon won this event in February of last year. He did some awfully cold conditions. <laughs> he may be wishing for some of that cold weather back. <laughs> We've got a lot to look forward to on this edition of FLW Outdoors. When we come back, Hank Parker joins Chris Elliott. This week's field and stream trivia, Lake Wheeler holds the world record for what species? Is it trophie, smallmouth bass, blue catfish, or African perch? Your field and stream trivia answer, a 111-pound blue catfish was caught in Lake Wheeler in 1996 by William McKinley, and that's a world record. I think you're pretty collected on this deal, but you got to know that you got to catch fish here in order to make that big dance. And I'm telling you, that's the biggest event in fishing. That's, that's a big deal. Oh, no doubt. But you may tell you who's sweating a hair more than me. Who's sweating a hair more? Those guys in 46, 47, 48. <laughs> They're the ones, <laughs> not to say I, I, I've got the pressure because I'm on the outside looking in. I've got to catch them to get there. They've got to catch them to stay there or fall out. And I think that's a little bit more pressure than what I've got. I bet I catch one right here. Can you get the net? I know you like that, didn't you? 48. That's where the bottom or the cut is. Yeah. How many points are you out of 48? I'm not sure exactly how many points I'm out of 48, but the way I figured it is it usually takes in the ballpark 800 points to make the championship. Um, I had to average 56 over the last two tournaments to make the championship. And I finished 56 at Kentucky Lake. <laughs> so now I've got to finish 56 again to give me 800 points. Do you have a pretty good feel for what you think it's going to take for you to get in that top 50? To make top 10 here, you're probably going to have to have 13, 14 pounds a day. Um, 
is what I'm figuring. I, you know, I don't, I don't really know, and I've tried not to spend a lot of time over analyzing the whole situation. Um, I'm just gonna, you just come out and fish hard and, and just see what happens. You get the net, good God almighty. This is King Henrietta here, boys. We got him. Ah, it's a jack. No, I seen that fish come up and all I knew it was about that long. I thought that was the length of the bass. I said, oh my goodness. You sorry devil. Well, now, did I not read that just before Murray this year that you had gotten to the point you thought, if I don't do something at Murray, mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, like I said, I got married just last July, and the wife and I, you know, we're looking eight, ten years down the road here. When we've got kids, I don't want to be broke and on the road, you know. I mean, and it can happen so easily. If the money's trickling in and pouring out, that bucket's gonna go dry pretty quick. I know so many people would give their left leg to just be able to fish one of these tournaments even as a co-angler or anything. And You know, to think I'm out here chasing a dream I've had since I was 12 or 13 years old and being somewhat successful at it is is more than I could ever ask for. We come to the terms where we're going to make a decision that, you know, we're going to draw the line somewhere. And it's hard to draw the line when you've grown up dreaming of fishing. You've never really held down another full-time occupation. And it, I mean, it's hard. It's, it's, it's hard to come to terms with the fact that you may have to give it up. But that's kind of what we had a mutual agreement on before that Lake Murray tournament. This is Sally. Big Sally. Come to Papa. Oh. Oh. We got her. Man, they ate that spinnerbait too. Can't beat that with a stick. Well, coming up next, we're going to have Larry Nixon, and we'll look at him, how he won the event here last year. And then later in the show, we're going to show a couple guys that are under a whole different set of pressure. They're trying to overtake Dan Moorhead for Angler of the Year. So you stay with us, FLW Outdoors. In the Everstart Series Eastern Division on Gunnersville Lake, Andy Morgan is the winner out of Dayton, Tennessee. He wins $10,000 and a fully rigged Ranger boat. And welcome back to Walmart FLW Outdoors as we preview Alabama's Lake Wheeler and the Forest Wood Open. You know, Carl, from the last time the tour was here, it was February of last year. Cold conditions, and through three days of fishing, Alton Jones was red hot and looked like the angler to be. He was one of the finalists, but also Mark Rose and Larry Nixon were two finalists in contention. They were both sharing the same spot. Larry Nixon decided that there was not enough fish in that area for both of them to do well, so he made a gamble. And as you're about to see, that proved to be a championship decision. Alabama, the site of the final 2003 regular season event on the FLW Tour. It's a big one. The $1 million Forest Wood Open. Big money is on the line. Angler of the Year is on the line, as is entry in the lucrative FLW Tour Championship. It will all take place right here. Your preview starts right now on FLW Outdoors. And welcome to FLW Outdoors. I'm Carlton Wing with Hank Parker and Taylor Carr. We're joining you from Florence, Alabama, the site of the final event of the 2003 season on the Walmart FLW Tour. And guys, we've got an Angler of the Year race that is hot. And to see how hot, just go back to last year, Hank. Uh, Kevin Van Dam had a 28-point lead on Jay Yellis. But in the final event at Lake Champlain, Yellis made it up and won Angler of the Year. Dan Moorhead faces a similar situation this year. You know, I fished with Dan at uh, Kentucky Lake. He was on fish good, and he had about a 55 or so point lead there. 
and over David Dudley, and I thought, boy, it's, he's on cruise control. He's got this thing won. Well, guess what? Dudley cut the points in half. So that does show how tight it is, and it can change. And I tell you, I'd hate to be uh, Dan in some respect, because the pressure is on. And Clark Winland is not too far behind as well. He trails Dan Moorhead by just 55 points. And on Lake Wheeler, where Clark does well, he could make up that ground as well. Could be a very interesting weekend here. Also interesting for the guys that are on the bubble. We've got guys that the top 48 make the season-ending championship. Guido Hibden is number 49. We've also got George Cochran, Steve Kennedy, the winner from Kentucky Lake, and Scott Martin. All big names just within a few slots of making that top 48. Well, and you know, uh, everybody kind of judges their season based on whether they make the championship. If you make the championship, you've had a great year. And the opportunity to fish for $500,000 is a great motivator. But still, their whole season based on whether they make it or not. And so the pressure is really on the guys that are on the bubble. And Hank, this fishery, which is the Tennessee River System, presents lots of challenges and lots of opportunities for these anglers. Well, you know, while we were at Kentucky Lake just a month or so ago, they were flooding down here. They had about eight inches of rain in 12 hours. Yes, sir, baby! Oh, no. <laughs> Boy, does that ever make you feel good. I believe I'll put him in there. I believe I'll put him in I don't think there's been but one string caught all week long bigger than what I got right now. That was a dandy. That's number five. A win, lose, or draw, by golly, it's been fun. Hey, what a day. Larry Nixon nearly lapped the field in winning this event. $110,000 was the first place check. It was the second FLW tournament win. This is the part of the show where you, the viewer, gets involved. It's called Ask a Pro. And our question comes from Derek Jones of Piscataway, New Jersey. And he wants to know about fishing in rain. Can you please give me some tips on fishing for bass when it rains? And what lures work best in the rain? Well, Derek, your answer comes from Yamaha Pro, Greg Carpenter. Well, Derek, when, when it starts to rain, uh, if it's a pretty heavy downpour, I, I generally always go to a spinnerbait or a buzzbait. Uh, for some reason, it, it brings them fish closer to the surface. And, and the spinnerbait and a buzzbait, I've heard all of my life to go to a, to a spinnerbait when it, when it starts to rain. I've used that, and it's always seemed to help me catch more fish. Coming up on FLW Outdoors, we'll study the tactics of the two men chasing Dan Moorhead, the leader in the Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year race, Castrol Pro David Dudley and Kellogg's Pro Clark Wendland. And up next, Hank fishes with Land O'Lakes Pro Karen Savick, who fishes on the pro side in the Everstart series and is a co-angler on the FLW Tour. from Minnesota is going to show us how you put strategies together for fishing out of the back of the boat as a co-angler. You don't right. like being a co-angler, do you? No, I don't. I can tell it's you the don't. truth. I, you know, I like being the boss of a boat. And I'm, I'm a really good teller. I'm a bossy person. Are you? So, oh, yeah. Well, you know, you have to be sometimes. But, no, I really um, don't love being in the back of the boat. But I learn a lot. It's If you go in with an attitude that you're there to learn, or it's a guide trip, and you just go and do the very best you can with what you can do and where you can cast, I think you can do all right. All I know is wherever that pro does cast, just cast wherever they don't. And whatever hole they leave open, you try to get it in there. And hopefully throwing something different than they're throwing, but probably at the same speed, because they go with the speed they want, where they want, the speed they want, the depth they want, the color they want, they do everything by their choice. Well now, 
that'll play great for television. I've been around you all of about 15 minutes, and I know for sure that that's not your attitude. When you go into the tournament, you want to win, and you, you want to catch it. the most fish, and you're not there to learn. You're there to catch fish. Oh, you, well, I am, but I'm there to learn, too, because if <laughs> I can't come away with something, catching. yeah, that's true. That's true. If I, if I can't learn something from everybody, then I... I don't know, I'd be pretty stupid. Well, My but co have the, taught me a lot. Well, I think that's a fact for everybody, though. I have to like it or I wouldn't be doing it. Well, I still, It still has to be wonderful. Is there going to be a day that you're in the FLW tournaments and you're going to be in the uh, front of the boat making some oh. guy in the back of the boat angry because you're fishing too fast? <laughs> I hope so. Say that. I hope so. Do you know, I never thought that I'd want to do that. Ever since I ever start last year and doing well, I, I think I've had the confidence to just get out there and try. And this last tournament, FLW tournament, I was on the wait list as a pro. I went down to Kentucky Lake, I pre-fished it for extra time, and I was on some really good fish. And if ever I wanted to fish an FLW, that was the one. And I still believe it, because this one's gonna be more difficult, but that one was fabulous. Well now, you fished as a co-angler after you didn't make the cut to be the pro? Yes, I did. I, I did it for a number of reasons. I just wanted to be a part of it. It's exciting just to be a part of this circuit. Uh, the energy is unbelievable. The show is unbelievable. Um, I, I love coming down south. I had time, and so I opted to go as a co, even though I couldn't get in as a pro. It's a really good, good way to figure out if you want to do that. Is that the tournament you drew Wesley as a partner? Oh, yes. Wesley Strider? Yes, it was. Is that when he stood on the stage and credited you for putting him on the fish? He didn't. Boy, was that ever cool. I don't think anything better could have happened. You know, even though I wasn't a pro, he sure was really neat about telling everybody. Did you go back to the same place? Yeah, but there's about four foot of water going over top of it. Hey, I got to thank Karen Savick, my amateur partner, because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have it too. You know, I, I, we talked about earlier the struggle to see if people take you seriously, and something like that, really, really, really will help people understand that I can fish, no matter male or female, it doesn't take strength to fish. Um, I can do anything they can do, and I just, I just want them to know I can fish, that's well, all. Well, you proved that, and Wesley acknowledged it, so that we have it. That's Thank pretty you. good. that was so cool. Well, Karen, I really do appreciate you riding me around and showing me the lake. Uh, you, got a, you got a real good challenge going, but here is gonna be a good lake for the co-angler. You're wide open. I think so. I think I'll have a good shot. So pressure's on. We're going to be watching and pulling for you. That'd be great. I hope you win. Thank you. I hope so, too. That'd be great. Now we're going to go join a couple of guys. We've got Clark Winlet and we've got David Dudley, who are just points out of Angler of the Year. And it would mean an awful lot to those guys to win Angler of the Year. So we're going to join them, and we're going to see what their strategies are here on Wheeler Lake, coming up right after this. I finished fourth in an FLW here. Um, I've, I've made the top ten nearly every time I've been here. I'm gonna call Spanner back to start off with for sure. Man, it looks good out here this morning. Hold on, we gotta do that over. I'm fishing with Clark Winlet, and we're going to catch some fish today, and the early bird gets the worm, so we ought to catch us a worm out here this morning. I hope so. I think it's going to be a good day. You know, Wheeler Lake's going to, it ought to fish pretty good. It's about as good a fish in here as I've seen. You know, you talk to a guy that won the NASCAR championship, he's not happy with third. You talk to a NFL team that's won the Super Bowl, they're not happy with second or third. So. I assume you're not real happy with third. Well, I'm I'm definitely not happy with third, but uh, you know, I, you know, I got a little ways to go. Uh, you know, I set my sights every year to that, that's kind of one of my goals. And, and whether it works out or not, you know, you just can't have a bad tournament. And the worst thing is, is Beaver Lake was where the where my only bad tournament was, relatively bad anyway. So, um, and we're just gonna go do the best we can do here and hope it works out. Uh, it's going to get to where every every technique uh, flipping. I mean, you know, it used to be Denny Brower and, and Biffle 
were the ones that flipped the most, and, and then now, everybody's a good flipper. I mean, that's just, that's just the way it is. There's one. Got a fish. That is a nice fish. Now, there's supposed to be three or four when you hit one out here on these river ledges like this. There's supposed to be three or four. Well, maybe there will be. But I, I bet that crankbait's probably going to be a little better than your spinnerbait. Maybe I'll catch it. Is your goal at this stage of the game just fish the lake, catch as many fish as you can catch, and let whatever happens happen? Or are you going to try to make something? No, I think that's, that's absolutely the way you have to do it, simply because uh, you know, I, I've got to I've got to finish in the top ten, undoubtedly, to have any, any chance at all. So I'm just going to go do the best I can do in the tournament. I'm not I'm not you know I don't have to fish conservatively here because it doesn't points. Uh, you know I'm going to make the make the FLW Championship, make the Jacobs Cup. So it doesn't it doesn't really matter about that. But what matters is I got to be in the top ten. So that's what's just what I'm going to shoot for. So you're really just fishing this tournament to win this tournament. That's that's what your goal is. Exactly. It's not about trying to overcome anybody it's just to win this tournament. Exactly what I'm trying to do. And uh, you know David Dudley's in second, and he's got to do the exact same thing. He's got to go try to win it. Now Dan Moorhead's got a little bit different. You know, if I was him, he can fish slightly conservatively, but uh, you know he he better catch him. I, I, I mean I, I'm not saying I'm gonna catch him, or, but David or I. One of us will probably do fairly well. So I just think Dan Moorhead's going to have to do fairly well. Hey, we just got through fishing with Clark Winlet. Now we're going to be fishing with David Dudley. And if you're watching the show earlier in the year, I fished with David at the Shafalai Basin. We're going to be fishing in a little different situation today. We've got uh, second place I'm just behind Dan Moorhead. Yeah, Dan pressure. Moorhead's a little bit in front of me. But I'm really not feeling the pressure right now because uh, I'd rather be sitting in second than first because Dan has everything to lose and I have everything to gain. So hopefully I'll be doing the gaining and he'll be doing the losing. <laughs> you adapted and changed your methods because you felt like you needed to catch a better grade of fish to finish in the top ten more consistently. So that's been your approach from the beginning of the year. Yeah. If we were to do like a little scale, you could see like the past six years, I've stayed around 10th to about 15th, somewhere in there. Once you hit a plateau, which is where I did, I was leveled out at that skill level. I, I had to adjust and try to do something different. So this year I came out with the attitude of not so much go out looking to catch a lot of fish and get numbers of fish, but how do I think and what areas do I think would produce a little bit better fish? And I've been doing that a little bit more and I've crossed that plateau and now I'm climbing back up another mountain. I just cut the fish already. you got the Jacobs Cup to look forward to. You've obviously got that made. You're going to go to Richmond and you're going to fish for 500 grand. What does that mean? Does that motivate you or pump you more than the thought of being able to overtake Moorhead and win Angler of the Year or? Yeah, no doubt. I'll have to admit it's been in the back of my mind. That's, man, that's incredible odds to, to have the top 48 people of the year fishing for forty uh, five hundred thousand dollars versus two and a half million five hundred thousand dollars first, first place. place. That, that means more to you than angler of the year. Oh yeah. That's been in the back of my mind more than angler of the year. We got a pretty good look at Wheeler and the cater flats and the whole body of water we got to deal with here, which is a lot of water, but I, I'm really uh, enjoyed getting to fish with you and I really enjoyed getting to fish with all the different guys and looking at the different uh, uh, places to fish and the flat idea that you have. Uh, you go back to uh, the fact that all the tournaments and the data show that all the tournaments have been won right here and you're going to concentrate on this. It's going to be interesting to see how it unfolds or if there will be some new water that's revealed for the first time and somebody get away from all this boat traffic 
and uh, catch a big string. Yeah, there's no doubt there'll be some fish caught away from here. But I'm just kind of playing the odds right now and banking my stake on Decatur Flats. I mean, odds show that this is going to be it. And I feel with me behind 25 points, my odds are going to be the best right here on Decatur Flats. Oh, gosh, it just missed it right there. If you'll detect that strike a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Recapping BFL action around the country, in the Bulldog Division, fished on West Point, the winner, Lamonte Walters of Warner Robins, Georgia, his winning weight, 18 pounds, 14 ounces. BFL Oki Division, fished on Keystone Lake, the winner, John Shore of Owasa, Oklahoma, the winning weight, 12 pounds, 6 ounces. Remember to look for all the BFL results at our website, flwoutdoors.com. It was the first day, the first morning of competition on the first tournament at Lake Okeechobee. The lady I, drawn, I drew out with, she had never fished a tournament before. She wanted to make sure she, that uh, she didn't get in my way or do anything wrong for the whole day. I get my rods out and I, I make a couple casts and I get hooked up with a fish. So I get a hold of a fish and she tells me, she says, oh, you know, what should I do? Should I get the net or anything like that? I said, no, I said, don't worry about it. This thing is pulling so hard, it's gotta be a catfish or something like that. So, about that time, the fish comes up and jumps. Here it is, a nine pound, 10 ounce bass. And about that time, she looked at me, she said, I bet you want me to get the net now, don't you? I said, yeah, yeah you're right, get the net. I'm standing up front, I got this fish in one hand on a on light line on a little crankbait, and the fish is out there jumping at a, At the same time, I'm trying to give her just kind of a slow, you know, you don't want to get excited about, you know, okay, well, hurry up and get this done. Like, so finally, she got the net open. She said, okay, now she puts the net in water. She says, all right, now just put him in there. And I, <laughs> she had the net in the water. We just led the fish into the net like that. And she said, that's the first time I ever had to catch a fish. This is my first tournament. I never netted a fish before. I said, well, you're doing a fine job. And, uh, but it turned out to be the nine pound, 10 ouncer, the biggest fish of the year. And, you know, I was, I was leading the first day of the tournament after that. And, you know, it was just, it's just one of those stories that where, you know, you go into it, she was thinking that, you know, hopefully she gets a draw or somebody's got some fish. And it turns out that she's, she's with the guy that catches the biggest fish of the whole year, has the biggest stringer. And so, I mean, it was just, a, it was just a, an amazing day. Welcome back to FLW Outdoors, where we study all sides of professional fishing, including the Just for Fun tournament. And those are tournaments a lot of our viewers fish, a single day or even a single evening tournament. But FLW pros do that to stay sharp as well. We're going to see Dan Moorhead and Terry Bolton fish an event on Kentucky Lake, a Tuesday night event. Of course, watch how they fish, but also listen to what they say as they fish Kentucky Lake on a Tuesday night. Just like John Wayne, we're riding off into the sunset. Rock on, Bolton, let's go. How would you like these guys in your local buddy tournament? Angler of the Year leader and Evan Rude Pro Dan Moorhead and five-time Tour Championship qualifier and Yamaha Pro Terry Bolton two longtime friends from Paducah are also regular competitors in the Tuesday night tournaments out of Moore's Marina on Kentucky Lake. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> Don't do this to me. There you go. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, sir. Moorhead is at his best when hopping a jig on Kentucky Lake's ledges. And Bolton excels at fishing those same ledges with a worm. There's no need for me to throw a worm. <laughs> Not with you at the helm. <laughs> now on center stage, Harry Bolton and his magical worm. Actually, what I'm doing is I'm just, at times, I'm just dragging the worm actually along the bottom. But most of the time, like right there, I just drug over a patch of rocks. But most of the time, I'm lifting it, and then I'm watching my line, the bow in my line. I'm just kind of picking it up and setting it down. They're now about 40 minutes into the one-hour tournament, and still just one fish in the boat. Well, Dan, we might ought to go to plan B. Well, yeah, if we're going to stick to the game plan, we better, better not dally around. Bye. I don't know. Yep. 
just had it by the back end of the worm, though. One of those cheaters. <laughs> So Bolton and Moorhead change locations and find some calmer water. The conversation, of course, remains strictly professional. Any new stories about Sean and the baby? Well, he's cutting his second tooth. Oh, Lord. Have you fished the hump? You know I have not. So in other words, Sean's not sleeping much. It's shallow enough up there. That ought to be where they are. Well. <laughs> He's not feeling good. Which one? The baby. Oh. Said he was in such a bad mood, they didn't even make it to church Sunday. Bolton, I don't think they're gonna bite my jig hopping it. Well, right now, they're really not biting much of anything. Yeah, we might have to go to plan C. Well, the good news is Sean and the baby are fine. The bad news is plan C fell short. Their five pounder was actually 415 and missed Big Bass by one ounce. Bolton and Moorhead ended up second place. They took home a bit of cash, but the bigger payoff was the time spent together and remembering why they fish in the first place. Well, Moorhead and Bolton didn't win that night, and that's a little bit unusual. In the past year, Dan and Terry have won more than half the Tuesday night events out of Moore's Marina. Well, that's a very impressive record. Not quite as impressive as the record of our picks at each of the FLW Tour stops. They've been fearless. They have been fearless, and some have been close. <laughs> We're going to try to get close again when FLW Outdoors returns with Hank Parker. And welcome back to Walmart FLW Outdoors as we preview the Forestwood Open on Alabama's Lake Wheeler. You know, throughout this season, Stanley Pro Scott Martin has helped us out by talking to some of the younger pros on the FLW Tour. And this week, Scott talks with Steve Kennedy, who won the Kentucky Lake event, but they talk about the long road toward becoming an FLW Tournament champion. Hi, I'm Scott Martin. I'm sitting in the boat today with Steve Kennedy. Steve is an up-and-coming FLW Touring Pro. And, you know, Steve, I read a little bit about you, and I want to know a little bit how you got your started, you know, fishing the FLW Tour and how you worked your way up through the BFLs, even local tournaments, to where you're at now. Okay. I started fishing when I was probably about three years old, wow. going with Dad. Uh, well, we went all over, all over the southeast anyway, and graduated from college in 92 and said, I want to fish, you know, this is what I want to do. And that was the first time I entered a BFL event. I uh, went as a non-boater, didn't have a boat, and fished for seven or eight years as a co-angler. <laughs> You've done all the tournaments all the way up through. You know, do you feel like that really helped you and gave you an advantage as far as learning how to fish these different lakes, learning different styles and techniques, working your way up the right way through the smaller tournaments up to eventually the FLW Tour? It, it definitely helped me. Uh, that seven years in the back of the boat and 30 years in the back of Dad's boat, I, I'm sure that's helped you also. But, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, learning to catch fish behind people is a big part of this because you're always fishing behind somebody. So. Well, look, I'm, I'm real proud of you. I think you're going to do real good this year, and uh, yeah, I think you're going to be around for a long time, and uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Steve Kennedy is one of those anglers on the bubble for the FLW Tour Championship. He's currently ranked 53rd in the season standings, and the top 48 go to Richmond. And any angler anywhere near the top 48 wants to make that final 48 because they go to Richmond, Virginia, and fish for a half million dollars first prize and a big show for the public, too. Everything is free, two country music concerts, a big outdoor show. Make plans to attend September 10th through 13th in Richmond. Go to richmondva.org or flwoutdoors.com for more information. All right, the class bell is now ringing. Fishing 101 is set to begin. Here's your course instructor, Yamaha Pro Dean Rojas, with some topwater tips. One of my favorite ways to catch fish is on, is on a topwater bait. And generally, you know, perfect ideal topwater conditions are what we have here is overcast skies, you know, and it's, it's 9 o'clock in the morning right now, and it's still overcast. Yeah! Oh, look at that! Look at that! Whenever you're topwater fishing, whenever you always want to dictate what the water conditions are. When it gets rough, ruffled and, and, and a little some wave action from, from the wind, um, I generally like to use baits that chug or, or make a, a, a louder commotion than the actual uh, commotion that's going on the surface. When you have something that chugs or spits, it makes a lot of commotion, has you know, propellers on it or whatever it might have, that's kind of a general rule of thumb for me is to use baits like that whenever I'm faced with that kind of situation. 
But for, for somebody who's a weekend angler, that's something that's easy to throw. Anything with, with propellers on it or something with a, with a cup finish like we have here, a little popper here. These are very easy to use. These are very easy to use because all you do is you basically cast them out as far as you can and you pop it. Just pull the rod back one time, you're on the slack and you pop it again. And what you're doing is you're, you're causing a chugging and a spinning motion uh, that, that, that the bait is, is producing and, and a lot of times it, it, it attracts the fish even when they're just standing still, you know. So um, it's real simple and easy. It's probably the easiest topwater bait to use uh, other than a buzz bait where you throw it out there and you just steadily crank it in and you want to keep it on the surface and keep them blades turning. You know, Hank, on your preview shows this year, we've been all over from Lake Okeechobee to Kentucky Lake and met some really sharp anglers along the way, starting down south at Okeechobee with a native of that area, Scott Martin. Yeah, you know, Scott, he's a lot like his dad. He's got that intensity in his eyes and very, very sharp. I was so impressed the way he read the water and his mechanics were just absolutely perfect. Really impressed with Scott. At the same spot, Lake Okeechobee, we talked with Larry Nixon, a guy I know you respect <laughs> a lot. He, you know, it just blows my mind. For 25 years, he's been so consistent and he's just an incredible guy. He's just as sharp now as he was when he started 25 years ago, and he's got that same enthusiasm, which is incredible. At the Atchafalaya Basin, we talked to Greg Hackney, and you liked the way he thought. You know, Greg, I, I just watched his presence. It wasn't anything that was striking, but overall, he was very aware of everything that was going on. I mean, if a minna flicked 100 yards away, he saw it. He was really in tune with the water. Very, very impressive. At Kentucky Lake, we met an angler who fishes faster than you did in your day, <laughs> Kevin Van Dam. I don't know how he does it. He is so incredibly fast, I can't possibly keep up with him. But he does it, and he does it with a rhythm and with complete control. The fastest guy I've ever seen. If he was a gunslinger, there wouldn't anybody have a chance. <laughs> and in all of our preview shows, nobody caught more fish in our feature than Dan Moorhead on Kentucky Lake. And he's the hottest guy of the year. I mean, what can you say? Dan Moorhead, I fished with his father 25 years ago. Dan comes from some great stock, and he's had training from his dad. Gives his dad a lot of credit. But he is an incredible fisherman. He understands the water really good, and Dan is going to be here for a lot, a lot of years. All right, well, the season has now come down to this, the final event of the regular season, and we, the experts, are ready to make one final prediction of who to look for here on Lake Wheeler in the final regular season. Stop, Hank, we'll start with your pick. Well, this is going to be really hot. Now, how many guys have we co correctly guessed this year? <laughs> I think we're zero. One, one or two. One yeah. or two. Oh, have we? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't know that. I have the top it. tens. We're counting top okay, tens. Okay, top yeah, tens. That's good. Broad range. Okay. Well, yeah. I like that. Every time I pick somebody, the next time they make the top ten, they don't when I pick them. So it's really a hard deal. But Kevin Van Dam is fishing so good. He's on the bubble. He's the last guy in, so he's got a lot of pressure on him, and I think he can handle that pressure, and I think he'll do well, and I think he'll do it all the way to the top. So I'm going to pick Kevin Van Dam. Kevin Van Dam. Hank picks Kevin Van Dam. I say watch out for Clark Wendland, who stands third in the standings now. He's a versatile fisherman, but he has to hit a home run. He has to fish big. I think he'll do well in this tournament. I say watch for Clark Wendland. None of us are really making any big reaches with these picks, but I'm going with David Dudley, who's second in the season standings, 26 points behind. He also has to fish well. He's got a good history of coming through with a big win in the state of Alabama. Last year, he set a record with his $700,000 first place check in the M1. He also just won an Everstart in the Northern Division just two weeks ago. He's hot, he's ready, and he can also overcome that, so I'll go with David Dudley. We'll find out how our picks did and the rest of the field and the Forest Wood Open next week on FLW Outdoors. Jeez, the Wallies aren't doing too good, eh? How's that? Pretty good. Huh? Slow down and finesse fish, and that's going to be harder for Dan than it is for David or Chris, or, uh, or somebody else. And yeah. uh, right there, Clark <laughs> or uh, Ron can... Martin. More pressure on, on Moorhead than it is uh, uh, Dudley or anybody else, so. <laughs> Clark. Clark. <laughs> Hold me. Don't you touch me. Stay away from me. You started it. <laughs>